I'm Martha Plant. I bury treasure for the lucky person who gets to it first. Every time, without a doubt, they compensate me in cash. We never meet, but we both win. Eureka! It's the highlight of my day. What the hell? Today, I had my first lunch guest. Are those your grandparents? They're my parents. You have your mom's cheeks. I'm adopted. Oh. I was left in a trash can. She's very weird. I sell air conditioning units. That sounds like fun. Throw your stuff off a cliff. It's not. Whatever happens out here is between you and me. I like it. You have different people living inside of you. I'm Angie. Where is Sadie? Who's Sadie? Sadie leaves when she's feeling bad. I think I'm receiving information. I think you're hallucinating. Richard? Martha? Do you like his butt? He's a nice butt. Are you friends? We're best friends. Do you have an air conditioner? I kind of hate myself now. I hate myself too. What? Oh, well, maybe they're new to the process. I doubt it. Maybe they're confused. I know I am. 7.30 a.m. breakfast, 8 a.m. departure. Why would someone want to sabotage my business? Hey, Zeus! We need weapons. We have a shovel. You look good. I'm gonna admit it. The heat is real. Hi. Hi, Hannah. How are you? Wow, Hi, that was good timing. You? Hello, ladies. Yeah. We came on exactly at the right time. Apparently, that was all too well synchronized. <laughs> that's how we. That's how we operate. Well, you both have much nicer backgrounds. I ordered new curtains just for so I could be a little bit the, more the visual. Are lovely. Well, behind yeah. it is great, but the light would be like it would be blind. <laughs> I would look. But um, like an angel. Yeah. Yeah, it would be. Yeah, a devilish angel. Uh, yeah. Nice to meet you both. Yes, it's lovely to nice meet you too. Yeah. Thanks for having I, us. I sort of have a some kind of connection to you both, which contributed to my, you know, my, um, you know, wanting to to do this. Mm -hmm. Tell us. Oh, you don't know? No. Okay. Well, let's start with uh, Alex Alexandra. Do you go by Alexandra or Alex? Go by Alexandra, but you know you're kind of special, so I'm gonna let you call me Alex if you'd like. No, no. Well, I now I have to call you Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Your dad did this podcast right, kind of like right when I started. Wow. So it was very. In fact, it wasn't even a podcast. It was like internet radio. So um, they had re-released, you know, his uh, Wake and Fright in New York, and. Uh, um, so it was an opportunity to, to do this with, and so I met him and it has to be about eight year, eight or nine years ago, right? Wow. Actually, I was at, you mean at the, um, uh, what was the theater that it was playing in the, uh, I'm guessing film form maybe. Yeah, film not... form. That's exactly, that was film form. I was there. So I don't know if you were at that, oh, the, no, no. that, well, that I night that my dad. I, I wish, but I had to see it ahead of time and get the thing done before it, started so I could promote it properly like what we're doing I see I see it um yeah. no definitely that's awesome I'm glad you got to speak with him I'm sure yeah. he was very engaging <laughs> he was it was it was a such a delight and he's a sweet guy and I remember I felt terrible because I was late I mean I had a co-host for that one and uh for that interview and I I just I don't know remember why it's so rare but I was I, I got there I was like literally like panting and perspiring. It was not pretty, but he was very nice. He was very much nicer than my co-host who was very annoyed <laughs> that I was like, right, you know, appropriately so. But okay, okay. Hannah. Uh-oh. You're thank you for being patient. You work with my ex-wife. <laughs> who is your ex-wife? <laughs> well, you, you know, you're gonna have to guess. <laughs> uh no, I, you'll never get so she is on the morning show. 
I have a guess. Okay. Is your name Karen? It is. Oh, oh my God, I love Karen. I mean, I'm sure you love her too. <laughs> well, you know, we, we have a child who is about, who is probably overhearing this. He's a few feet away from me in his room. But, oh, yeah. Um, we were in a scene yesterday together and I was really just there to like, um, like I wasn't even mic'd. <laughs> I'm just sort of atmosphere. So you had was, to talk louder in your unscripted well, improvisation. We just had, we just had this incredible conversations that had nothing to do with, you know, because we were kind of in the background of this thing before she goes up to someone. Um, and yeah, she's amazing. I'm a big fan. Yeah, that's, uh, it's a, it was a, quite a coincidence. Um, <laughs> in, in fact, my son is, is going to, uh, you, probably, you might meet him. I don't know how uh, many more episodes you're doing, but um, he's uh, been with me since you started shooting the second season, uh, but he's going out there in a couple of weeks. So he might, who knows? Right. I mean, likely is that he, they probably won't want people on the set that don't belong there, but you never know. Oh, I, well, I hope I get to meet him and I love yeah. that connection. That's super special. I have yeah, a question. Was... How did you guess that? Um, That's I a good think, question. Well, I, it was really weird because we were just talking yesterday about her children and I, she didn't mention, obviously, um, I just know that she had a husband at some point and then I was like, I couldn't think of anyone else. And she was at the top of my brain. Right. So I was like, mm. yeah. Maybe. Um, yeah, and then, uh, right, anyway, I, I'm sorry to have, you know, co-opted all the beginning time, but it was worth it. It seemed like you, you know, Definitely enjoyed that. So I, enjoy, I enjoyed to share, I enjoyed sharing that. I shared it with uh, your publicists, but uh, Rob <laughs> and Emily, but, um, oh, well, okay. First of all, I've never heard of spending 127 on an independent 127 days on, a, on an independent film any long like that just doesn't happen but then i read more that you guys were your own crew you're the two co-stars of the film and you made the film together you wrote it and you're is it co-directed by you guys yes or does that fall under yeah. just okay so you've done everything but you also shoot it so you're the cinematographer together you're the Right, sound, you're the everything. Is that I'm sure you had some assistance, but you had to have that. But that's why you could do like three months making an independent film. Well, we actually did not have assistance. It, we had each other, which was the biggest form of assistance we could have asked for. It was just the two of us wow. in the desert <laughs> making the film, other than the other actors. Um, so yeah, I would say we were we could split everything. And I mean, there were a couple things that maybe one of us did, but they were more, um, they were tasks sure. that pretty much one person could do. Like Hannah was the DIT, I was the craft services, you know. But other than that, <laughs> we, were, we split everything. Well, why, why, why did you choose to do it that way? Choose to do it without a crew? Yeah, be your own crew. I mean, it's, it's, it's it presents all the more, more additional challenges, right? So. Yes, um, I think that's a, a, a couple pronged answer to that. I think there were a couple reasons that didn't come all at once, but the first was uh, we had written a script that was not this film and we knew we wanted to direct together. So we we're gonna do a short film. And then the wild hair idea came that we would shoot a feature. Why not just make it a feature? And why not just, uh, we you know, do it on our own, we had access to equipment. We were working on a documentary at the time. Oh. And, um, mm -hmm. That is where it started. And then um, we ended up going out to the desert and uh, with 15 pages of a script. And um, what we found there was that we were able to shoot entirely without a crew uh, with, the, with the right equipment. And, we also found that we needed to go write a script. <laughs> so we used that footage for our crowdfunding campaign. Oh, I uh, see. To be able to jumpstart our actual- or kickstart as it were. Yes, kickstart, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that, that's where it started. I think it started quite innocently and quite delusionally and, um, and not, we didn't really overthink it. It just sort of was like, let's do this. And then it became a much bigger beast as we mm. actually decided to right. do. 
Right, because I think if you had gone to like uh, experts, let's call them experts, you know, everybody would have said, you, you can't do that. You can't, you know, you shouldn't do that. You really ought to rethink, you know, all those kinds of responses. But if you throw yourself into it, you know, of course, you know, necessity being the mother of invention, all that. I mean, you just sort of jumped into it and then you committed. So yeah. you can do that. Would you recommend it? And I know you have another one, the peach, what is it called? The peach, peach people, peach pits. I'm sorry. Peachville. Peachville. Um, very close. Peachville. Um, so is that, are you doing I, the same thing? Yeah, well, no, no, let, let me answer that one. No, we're okay. not going to be doing Peachville in the same way first. <laughs> Okay. Um, and just referring back to what you were previously saying, I would, when we were describing it to people, I mean, I, it was really hard for people to imagine what we were doing. Like when we said no crew, it, it didn't really sink into people that there was nobody behind the camera. You know, there, I, I don't know. I think unless you're there, it's a very odd thing. And you're like, oh yeah, that, that, that makes sense. Kind of. I mean, I guess people who really know films, they know, uh, no, that's kind of crazy what you're doing. Can you actually do that? But most people didn't really wrap their mind completely around it um, until it was all said and done. Uh, and would I recommend it to people? Uh, make your, your film, make your film, make yes. it however you can make it. If this right. is how you can make it, go out there and do it because honestly, you'll grow old waiting to make your film. Um, and so right. I would say, and this wasn't. I'm sorry. Before I forget, this wasn't because there was a pandemic. You shot this before that, right? So obviously, oh, yeah, you were, you, you've been in lots of festivals over the last year. So people listening or watching shouldn't be confused that you didn't have a crew because of, you know, uh, health-related reasons, but because this is just the way you did it. Yeah, we did it. Yeah, we started shooting. Our, our concept trail in 2015 and then really got into the main production in 2016. So yeah, this was a while ago. And uh, yeah, I think that we took it as we didn't want to wait around anymore. We didn't want to mm. have to like grovel for money that we didn't think people would give us. Uh, and we just were going to do it. We didn't realize how hard it would be and we didn't realize how much time it would take and how much more money we would need. Um, hmm. So I guess if we took all the, if we knew it was going to take two out two hours, excuse me, two years of our life, um, I think we probably would have second guessed ourselves and probably not done it. So it's good we didn't know. Now you guys have uh, known each other all your, pretty much all your lives, it sounds like. Yeah, certainly feels that way because we, we met at eight uh, in, in third grade. Um, I was, uh, I had been at the school for two years but Alexandra was the new kid in class. And I took to her and she took to me. And um, yeah, it, that was the beginning of, of an incredible friendship yes. and, a, and a lot of madness and in and, and creating crazy things. Wow. Um, and uh, were you from, uh, uh, were, uh, Hannah, were you from a um, theatrical family or you know, in the arts or as well? Um, my father um, is an actor and a writer and my um, mother is a director producer um, and her father was like a cult B filmmaker so oh, yeah yes he he would you know he like took out two mortgages on their house to be able to afford his films and I would sit on his lap while he'd edit he, he wrote directed produced edited his films and would um, oh. in his so little it's office. genetic it's a gen genetic yeah, just it, <laughs> it is. Although he, they didn't have that opportunity. I don't know. They didn't have that option rather uh, back then to be there to have not have a crew because you know equipment was very different. This is true, very right? true. There was definitely more than two people, but he would enlist yeah. the whole family. He, you know, like um, I think my mother would script supervise or AD. I don't remember. Or would my and my uncle would produce and, you know, he'd so amazing. Grandma would cater the sets. So. Yeah. Well, he didn't work like for Roger Corman or anybody, did he? No. <laughs> I just thought I'd guess because, uh, you know, he always, of course, had those types of B-movie. May, this may have been before that. It sounds like maybe even a little before that time in the 60s and 70s. But, uh, um, well, you know, people should know that 
your film called The Planters is kind of works also, it kind of fits with No Crew because it's also relatively minimalist in its production and its presentation. There's a lot of open space in terms of dialogue, you know, it's minimalist. And um, actually, Hannah, you, you play three characters. <laughs> kind <laughs> <Got> of. <laughs> so you really have a small cast as well as No Crew, right? Um, and there's, there's no like, a lot of heavy duty, uh, um, you know, uh, what do you call it, when you're blocking people and all that type of stuff. It was, right, it worked a little bit because of that. Yeah, very much. It's think, not really a question, but I'm just putting it out there. But no, yeah. it's, I mean, that is what it, it was minimum. We wanted to make it minimalistically and we knew, I think we were realistic on on our um, our boundaries of what two people can really do as much as we think we can do a lot, we also mm -hmm. realize we can't do everything. So uh, yeah, that it, minimalist is correct. I, I was joking, I made a joking reference to Sadie's character, uh, rather Hannah's character named Sadie, who is a multiple, has multiple personality disorder, if that's still what it's called. I know is we evolve. Yeah, it's evolving. Culturally, the, we, sorry. Uh, Disassociative identity disorder this is now okay. the, the diagnosis. Yes. Yeah, we used to just put them all into a, like, you know, uh, uh, this container called schizo nuts before that, probably, you know. Um, well, so how did you decide you were going to handle being having that disorder? Or is it is it disorder? Is that what it's called? It's a, a disassociative identity disorder. Dis um, it is a disorder. Okay, right. So, um, how did you guys want? I mean, you had to obviously think a lot about how you were going to present that, right? Yes. Um, so it wasn't just played for laughs. Exactly. I mean, there are a lot of laughs in it, but yeah, we didn't. Um, I don't think wanted to intend that um, any of what she was going through mental health wise was funny. Um, more just the inner dynamics of their relationship and Martha having to deal with this, um, these different sort of people that enter her life in one body. Um, and um, I don't know, we did, I mean, we did obviously a lot of research on, on the disorder and, um, uh, you know, we were specific as to how we wanted to present it, um, but we really wanted it to feel like um, these were three very different people, although all part of Sadie, um, that Martha was having to be in a relationship with. Sorry, that's my dog. Um, <laughs> she wants to be involved. Um, I, hope, I hope the dog yeah. makes an appearance. I'm going to let Alexandra talk for a minute because she is okay, going we crazy. Can, yeah, yeah. Um, because I, I can also add to my my thoughts as an audience member, uh, having seen it, uh, that it, it is the planters is a comedy. But uh, what I enjoyed about it is um, is that it was a res it was a very respectful portrayal of someone who had this disorder. At the same time, there was there is you could live a full you could be a full person with a full life and a contributing person like in a relationship and a friendship and in, in society it's you know um despite that i mean you know so and there is humor in it in her situation yeah i think that we wanted um one of the themes general themes i guess of the film is like this idea of unconditional love even uh, uh, between okay strangers that become friends uh, and full acceptance of the other and hopefully living in a world where we can accept the other, right? Because I mean, uh, Sadie is, <laughs> yeah, she but on the surface like, whoa, wacko. Um, but when you fully get to know her and, and see her complexities, she's just, a, she's a human being. And Martha on the surface is not, <laughs> she's, she's weird too. She has yeah, her stuff. Right. Maybe there's no identifiable disorder that you're pinning on her, but both these she seems, people, what? Yeah, she seems a little depressed. Oh, oh yeah, she's definitely, oh, or, yeah. you know, 
Can has certainly a, or some level, you know, yeah, there's something going on. Sure. Oh, absolutely depressed. I mean, maybe she wasn't diagnosed by a psychiatrist, but yes, I think so. Um, but both of these people, as flawed as they are, find acceptance in each other and love in the other. So that's that was all we were trying to really do. Right. Yeah. Well, where did you premiere the film? Uh, we premiered at Rain Dance Film Festival in London in fall of 2019. What went into that decision? Was that just because they were the first to grab it? Or uh, this? Go ahead, Hannah. What did you want to ask? Well, I can say we distinct, I distinctly recall sitting, we're in Palm Springs in that mobile home that we shot and lived in for five months. And I, we, we love, I've always loved Rain Dance and, and a lot of the kind of indie gems that have come out of there. And we definitely talked to them about wanting to go there. Um, but they, they really um, embraced the film and it felt like the right, right place to be. Um, and uh, we, we ended up, we, we weren't even, we weren't in, in competition, but we won film of the festival there, which was awesome. We snuck up on them. Yeah. What can you say? Our little film just, it snuck up on people. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then it seems to have had quite a lot of uh, festival success. What was your, did you have like a strategy for that? Or did you just think, you know, the more the better? Um, that um, works? Yeah, we had, a, we had a strategy. That's why we waited to find the right festival. We, we quite frankly, we were accepted into a, other festivals before, but we wanted to make sure that our route and our plan was strategic and the best launch pad for people to see the film. And that's why we were, we just, we just loved, we loved going from rain dance. We went to Nashville and then Austin, we did the South and then we went to AFI, I think I can't remember. And then, you know, we really, we did some amazing festivals and we just felt like it was the right path for us. Yeah, what, did we premiere at Sundance? No, but was our path our own and just fine and it worked for us? Yes. So it gives hope to those out there. I don't know if your listeners are listening, like you, you don't have to go to Sundance to get a distributor. Some people at Sundance, Sundance don't get a distributor, so. True, right. Uh, well, great advice and right, come up with uh, uh, your own strategy, you know. I, if you can do Sundance, great. But it, like you said, it doesn't guarantee anything at the end of the day. You still have to kind of believe in your your film and uh, and believe there's an audience for it and just do your best to connect the two, I guess. Precisely. Yeah. Um, so it's called The Planters, which refers to this, uh, uh, I wouldn't call it a hobby as much as like kind of a way of life for Martha, your character. Uh, uh, Alexandra, Alex, uh, and, and where she buries stolen treasures. Yes. Martha, um, Martha is an introvert. Uh, by day, she's a telemarketer. And then also- Oh, right. Of course. We almost forgot the air conditioners. <laughs> but yeah, she's a telemarketer for air conditioners. But when she's not doing that, because she hates doing that, um, because she's terrible at it, right. uh, she- does her passion, which is planting uh, stolen goods that she she nick you know grabs from a local store and and then she um, buries them in the desert for people to find. So she, it's she's the she's the treasure hunter. Wait, no, excuse me, the treasure barrier for people to hunt. <laughs> it's sort of a MacGuffin, I guess. If I do you know the term, right? MacGuffin. You know I mean? A MacGuffin. Yeah, I I've heard of it, but you have to refresh my memory. Well, it's like kind of like a, it's something that you think is going to lead you to a, some sort of answer about the film, the story, uh, but it actually is like kind of a red herring. It really isn't, yeah. bad, although it could represent something, I suppose. You know, you could sort of probably interpret it, her, what this, what this, how this reflects on who, who uh, uh, Martha is or what the film is trying to say on some level, but. It, it really is not the main point of the film. It isn't, but it is. <laughs> so you have to see it. So uh, I would say, is it becoming available on on uh, demand? December, December 8th. Oh, very good. On That's coming DMV. right up then. 
So today is uh, the uh, third as we're talking. So actually when people will put this on the YouTube, but we'll wait until it's available so people can go from here to seeing uh, the planters right away. Excellent. Right here. And, uh, and then we'll, we'll have to, uh, we'll have to make an, a date for Peachville. Are you both going to be acting in that as well again, or? That, yes, that, that is the plan. If people who don't mind our faces, we're happy to do it again for them. <laughs> yeah, I think they can tolerate your faces. Um, and you both got great smiles. Um, and Martha, I don't know if we see, it's nice to see your smiles because I don't, I'm sorry, Martha, Alex, I, I, it's nice to see your smile because I don't know that you show a smile in all of the film, maybe at the end. No, the only one, which is a bit, she's, she's drunk. She oh. laughed. So the, the, I'm not going to give anything else away. I don't know if okay. I'll, oh, I do. I know one other place, but I'm not going to say. Yeah. Um, no, she's not, she's not a smiler. That's not how she communicates. She's an inward smiler. You know, there's some people who, yeah, she's an inward, <laughs> the smile is coming from inside. <laughs> right. So like when you see a dog who maybe doesn't have a tail, <laughs> There are some dogs that do, like pugs who don't have tails. So you have to look for other clues to know if they're smiling. Yes, exactly. I hope I didn't just call you a dog because you're not a dog at it's all. Okay, anymore. as long as I'm maybe, um, you know, I, I don't like dogs very much. One of the cute ones, like Hannah's dog's cute. As long as I look like Hannah's dog, I'm I, good. I barely caught a glimpse of Hannah's dog. Zelda, do you there, there, oh my gosh. Zelda. So it's a, Hi. is it Zelda. a, She's is it a lab? Yeah. It's not a lab. It's what is a it? lab mix, yeah. Oh, a lab mix. Goes. <laughs> easy come, easy go. Not interested in being on uh, Zoom, apparently. Just wants to be next to you. Yeah. Um, it's really nice meeting you both. Do we get to everything? Do I leave anything? Is there anything we should we'll mention? You, and... you can mention the other two actors in the film. Yes. Um, Phil Paralisi plays Richard. Uh, he's just a, a, a incredible actor and human. Um, he plays Martha's love interest. Uh, he's a uh, also grieving the loss of his recently deceased mother and, um, and finds a, a nice place in a, in, a, in a group of outcasts with Sadie and Martha. Um, and there's Jesus. And Jesus played by the great Pepe Serna, uh -huh. uh, who was the only actor we cast through, aside from um, Martha's boss, Donald, uh, was the only actor we cast through traditional casting route. Uh. Um, we knew Phil for years. Um, he'd done a play with my dad and uh, he's just- He stalked him. Stalked yeah. Him. Now you do also have, you just because there isn't a Produ crew and production crew on the produ during the production, you still have lots of help, uh, and some of your family members, right, Alex? Like uh, your brother did the music, composed the score, my some brother, of the songs, or my brother composed. My brother Thomas Koch, he composed the score, and Hannah's husband. We stayed in the family. Uh, you did, did the amazing original songs. Um, oh, okay, right. Yeah, there were some good so, ones. We kept, we kept it in the family. And a lot of those voices, if you look at the voiceover parts, there'll be some familiar names there. <laughs> Maybe your father? Yep, my dad, her, Hannah's dad. Uh, we, we, we do a couple ourselves. Um, so yeah. And the animation, let's not leave out that because that plays, that's a big part of the film too. There is there are certain animated or stop animation sequences. Yeah, uh, Sam Barnett was not in the family, but he's in the family now. <laughs> once you're in, he, yeah. Once you're in. Um, we, Alexandra found him uh, around the time before we shot, we had done, we were Indie uh, Wires Project of the Month in February, 2016. And around that time, Sam had a project called The Operator that was on the platform um, in competition um, and she was like, oh my God, we have to work with this guy. He's amazing. And we looked at his stuff and then we uh, stalked him, but not really. We just found him and got him to Skype with us and said, you have to do our film. And um, so that, that is how that happened. Uh, but he's, he's 
he's also a kind of a one man band, one person band. Um, just he's he's incredible, and and everything you see in that he built. Uh, and um, it was it was really fun getting to to be there for that that process. And we were just there clicking the shutter. <laughs> thing is really because we got kind of militantly like we have to do everything like we wouldn't let anyone touch anything on set like um pepe and phil wanted to help move a piano we're like no we're doing it <laughs> like ourselves it was like going way extreme um but i'm in terms of the animation <laughs> this was in our kind of extreme mode we're like we, we need to press the button every I mean, Sam did everything, let's be honest. Like we told him, okay, we want the, the characters to move that way. And we were there for all the shooting, but he did everything. We were like sh um, pushing the shutter button, you know, every time it takes one photo for stop motion animation. Yeah, because it's stop animation, uh, the exactly. old fashioned way. Yeah. We didn't have to do that. We just like, we went too far. We were in a bit of a, a world of our own, okay. but yeah, we, we were doing that. Well, yeah. it's a fun, vis visually fun film as well as, everything else and um I'm, I'm urging people to go after this to uh, find it on on streaming on demand and um enjoy the planters which is uh co-written directed starred by alexandra kotcheff and hannah letter did i get that right letter leader or is it leader leader works too. yeah no 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 let's do it the way you're <laughs> supposed to alexandra K kotcheff and hannah leader makes Correct. sense you one d it. Leader, got it. Uh, thank you both. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. For having us. Check Any... out our film. Well, not you, but the others. The other I'll, yous. I'll, the I'll check it out. I'll check it out again. <laughs> Thanks so much. We really we had a lot of fun. Me too. Yeah. Anytime. Thank you. Okay. Enjoy the rest of your day. You too. Bye bye. Bye now. Bye.